Each year we play what's called the Priest versus Seminarians basketball game. It's actually a huge event in the Archdiocese. We have about 4,000 people come and, and cheer for either the Priest or the Seminarians that they battle it out on the basketball court. So each month we as priests have basketball practice. So this morning it's 6 a.m. and we're about to hit practice with all the other priests. That's what's up, it's good practice. Overall, we uh, got a good workout in up early, and uh, everybody was healthy, which is good. We don't want any injuries. Overall, just coming out, competing, getting a good workout in is what it's all about, and we'll get ready for the game in a few months. So we finished our basketball practice, and now I have just enough time to grab some breakfast with Father Joseph and Father Christopher at a local favorite, Las Locas Fajitas. We often get questions about what we wear as priests, and there's a couple different options about what we can wear. Originally, priests often wore what we call a cassock, which is a long black robe. You might have seen me wearing that in other videos. And the cassock works great. Um, it's very clear sign to everyone that you are a priest. But the story that I've heard is that as priests began to evangelize in different places, they often had to ride horses, especially when they came to America. And riding a horse kind of in the long black robe was difficult a little bit. So what they decided to do was just kind and chop off the top of it and put on pants, which are a little bit more comfortable on a horseback. And we've ended up with what we have now, which is the collar here is a shirt, the black pants. Um, even with the collar, you have a couple different styles. This is called a Roman collar. So you have the white at the top here. I can even kind of snap it out. You can see it all the way going around. But you also have what we call a tab collar, which is just a small white piece, which you can insert in the front of the collar, which makes it very clear that you, that you are a priest. Without the collar, I tend to joke, we sort of look like waiters in sushi restaurants. <laughs> um, but with the collar, it's a clear sign of what we are um, and, and what, what we stand for. Oftentimes, the, the black symbolizes death, dying to yourself, dying to the world, and the white symbolizes the purity, the chastity that we're called to have as priests. Regardless, wearing a collar in public is one of my favorite parts of being a priest, just beautiful encounters you have with people. I was at a restaurant yesterday and a guy just walked up and said, hey, thanks for what you do, and that was it, he kept walking. And so I think it's beautiful that in the world, we have some outward signs of Christ's presence among us, and that's what we hope the collar is for those who see us. The parish is just about 15 minutes from a local penitentiary. 
which means each month one of the priests will go out there to hear confessions and say mass for the inmates. And I never really done much like that before, so I had to go through special training to come in. But it's been one of the things I look forward to the most as a priest, is coming out, being with the inmates. Kind of a unique situation because it's a medical unit, so many of the inmates here are going through some kind of uh, medical issue, whether physically or in some other capacity. And so getting to come and minister to them, you really feel like this is who Jesus came for. That this is what the gospel is about, is coming and bringing God's mercy to these men here. At the end of the day, you know, can't offer them maybe physical freedom, but we can definitely offer them spiritual freedom in Christ through the sacraments. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. It really is pretty extraordinary because here at the chapel they have tons of resources. They have a full music setup, they have a drum set, they have a keyboard, they have microphones, they have a sound guy. For mass, they have the missiles, they have the hose, they have the candles, they have an altar. It's pretty incredible to be able to come in as a priest and, and they have a sacristan here setting everything up. And it's beautiful that all the inmates pitch in to really make church happen here, to make the mass come alive for you as a priest when you show up. I mean, one time I was saying mass here during Advent and I was really impressed to see that they had an Advent wreath. They had three purple candles and a pink candle. And I was talking with one of the, one of the guys afterwards and I noticed that he had marks all over his hands. And I asked him what had happened. And he said, well, it was Advent, so I knew we needed an Advent wreath, but all we had were white candles. So I went and got the white candles and I got a bunch of markers from the library and I colored three of them purple and I colored one of them pink so that we'd have an Advent wreath. But he said they're made out of plastic so every time I move them after mass, I get the marks all over my hands. And I thought after that, gosh, you won't be the only man with marks on his hands as signs of his love. That even in a place like this, you can do your part to show your love and maybe you have marks like Christ on your hands to show for it. So it's true that as a parish priest in Houston, you're often saying masses for large groups of people living out in the suburbs. And that's really beautiful to be able to minister to those people in that way. But I love as a priest that my priesthood also means coming here to be with you guys and bringing them the same sacraments, the Eucharist, confession, bringing them the presence of Christ that they need so much. said there's a story like that in a book that I read this guy has some sheep but one gets misled so he leaves all the rest and he searches it down and he carries it back and he makes the lost found there's a story just like that in a book that I read I remember after a mass one day, I went up to this, this one guy and he had bandages over his eyes. And I asked him how he was doing. He said, I'm, I'm doing well, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. But he said, I have a ALS, which means my body is gradually shutting down. So last week I lost the vision in my right eye and this week I lost the vision in my left eye. So he said, the Lord's teaching me to see in a new way. He said, I might have lost the vision of my eyes, but the Lord's teaching me to see in a new way. And I never forgot in that moment, and I've thought of that whenever I encountered difficulties or challenges, that that inmate taught me that anytime we're encountering something that seems hard, it may not be that we're losing something. It might be that the Lord is teaching us to see in a new way. <laughs> Thank you.
So since the first time I came to say mass here, I've always seen the whole music set they, that they have and thought how cool it would be to be able to come play a concert for these guys. So we arranged some stuff to make it happen, bring in some of the special equipment that's needed, and we'll be trying to put on a show for them tonight. My name is Ralph Ambiel, and I have been volunteering here at the prison for 10 years. I first started with the Colby retreats and then got more involved in doing the St. John math classes and coming to mass every week. And Father Dave Michael has just been amazing. It's, it's so wonderful to have priests come in here. It's just more special when, when you have the priest here and he blesses, he brings the, the, the Eucharistic right there and it's just so special, but that, also because of the, the confession. And it may be sometimes two or three months before they get to say confession. So. That's a long time. But I can tell you that we've had people that have come through this program. Uh, they, get, they say the recidivism rate is about within three years that seven out of eight guys will reoffend and come back inside. Seven out of eight. And our experience here is like, well, one out of eight. This is an amazing program because when the priest comes in and he blesses the bread and the wine and becomes Jesus' body and blood, it's just so precious. Uh, finding new people to hang with, new places to be, uh, establishing solid habits that, that don't don't um, cause you to reoffend, and it's it's tough because we support them when they get out for three months. Say we'll pay your pay your rent and everything else for three months. That's that's your head start. And then you want to once you get a job, then you can pay your own your own rent. And some of them can't. They they on disability, uh, but the ones that do, you know, they're. They're, they do amazing. I've got one guy that's been out now for a year and a half. He's moved up in his company. He's only one of two people in that company that can release a product out the door. He's the guy that has to sign off. That's what we like to see. We like to see life change. That's why we do this. Because we don't believe that people are trash. They may do stupid stuff. I tell them, my guys, you did something stupid. You wouldn't be here. You didn't do something stupid. So just admit it. You did something stupid. We've all done something stupid. My stupidity was not enough to cause me to go to the jail. Yours was. But how are you going to not do something stupid and get back out, out there again? And that's why we do this. I said fly, you said twist, plop, plop. I said fly, you said twist, plop, plop. Say to the end, it's one you won't want to miss because Christianity has all the best plot twists. Well, all the Jewish people, they were looking for a savior, but they were looking in a throne. They weren't looking in a manger. They wanted a king. That's why everyone went crazy when plot twist. God showed up as a baby. Ha! I said plot, you said twist, plot, plot. I said plot, you said twist, plot, plot. Stay to the end. It's one you won't want to miss because Christianity has all the best plot twists. Well, Jesus was preaching and he had a hungry crowd. 5,000 people who were ready to chow. Five loaves, two fish, all they had that day. Then plot twist, all you can eat buffet. Aha. I said plot, you say twist, plot, plot. I said plot, you say twist, plot, plot. Stay to the end, it's one you won't want to miss because Christianity has all the best plot twists. Well, the apostle Paul wasn't always a bro. He wanted Christmas dead, he didn't want him to grow. He had papers to kill, he made all the Christians run. Then plot twist, he became one. I said plot, you say twist, plot, plot. I said plot, you say twist, plot, plot. Stay to the end, it's one you won't want to miss because Christianity has all the best plot twists. So we kind of got that going a little bit. And I realized I had this box drum here, and I thought maybe I could play that too. So this is as many instruments as I can play at once. Try to go for four. And uh, you know, I was thinking, we got a tambourine, we got a drum, we got the harmonica. This is Houston, I should write a country song, right? So I wrote this song to be as country as I could possibly make a song, okay. Time to get out the house, time to head to the woods. I don't got a lot of friends, but the ones I have are good. The whole band is ready, and it's time to go. Gonna be a good night at the Jester 3 Rodeo. Hop in the truck, it's 
go for a ride. Time to kick this night into four wheel drive. So grab a friend and gather around and turn the music up, cause it's time to get down. Hee haw! We got about 50 volunteers involved on this. We get four different classes. Social values, peer relations, life increase, and also substance use. And we also do RCIA programs. We also do sacrament meetings. We also do halfway housing outside of the prison with the people that come out. And we also give them uh, food routes and also support when they come out to guide them to them. And then we take them to the churches that they might be able to go when they go. That's what we all do here in this ministry. And we thank you all our volunteers. And we thank our priests and our deacons, our clergy that is coming to help us. That is something very, very special to be able to do that. This means so much for us to get this team and share that love with all the people here in Chester Tree. I hope you guys come back sometime soon. You're walking out just now. It, it's just crazy to think that this is my life, that I, I get to do this. I was telling one of the inmates afterwards, you know, if I wasn't a priest, I probably never would have met these guys. But my priesthood has taken me to all these places and, and, and led me to meet all these people that I probably wouldn't have met otherwise. And talking with these guys, you realize how common your experience is, that you're all human beings, and you're all sinners in need of grace, pursuing God. I had a thought too, while I was saying mass, that you know, my, my own dad went to jail 13 times um, for a lot of pro-life work that he did. And I really see my father in these men that I would hope that my dad, when there's a priest came to visit him, that he would have shown him a certain level of, of respect and dignity and friendship and hope. And that's what I hope I, I bring these guys. And I'm just so thankful to, to be able to, to be with them in this way. Afterwards, uh, one of the guys gave me an update on that man I, I mentioned earlier who uh, had lost his sight and said the Lord was teaching him to see in a new way. And they said he's, uh, he's actually about to go on hospice. So he's, he's preparing for death now. And they said his attitude is what you would expect. He is so hopeful still. And he is still in such good spirits. And it's so inspiring, they said, to see him the way he is. And uh, you know, as he prepares to meet God, he is about to see everything in a totally new way. And uh, I think that's the hope for all of us, and certainly being a place like this does give you a new perspective on life. Thanks for joining us on Unscripted, a program brought to you in collaboration with Shalom World. To continue enjoying Unscripted and many other shows, you can download the free Shalom World app on your smart TV or mobile device, or visit shalomworld.org to discover a plethora of faith-filled resources and inspiring entertainment, all at your fingertips. Shalom World relies on the generous support of viewers like you to produce programs like Unscripted and many others. Your donations make a difference, allowing Shalom World to continue spreading the message of hope that comes from the gospel. So please consider donating. God bless.